Hello, this is Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica, and today we are going to talk about kind of the evolution of the training idea that we do. We're going to answer some questions here about why we're doing what we're doing and in what way. This is a nerdy video, of course, about our kind of our philosophy of training, but it's not quite philosophy, it's training. It's philosophy of training layout. We start all of our training with no foot movement. I see a lot of people doing foot movement right at the beginning on first day, and it doesn't, hey buddy, and it tends not to help people a lot. In the beginning, most people need to learn to stand up. We talk about that a lot on this channel because most people do not stand up at all very well. Therefore, they are trying to stack a high athletic performance on top of a weak structure. Everything we do in the beginning is based on building stronger standing structure, whether it be kettlebells, club, mace, hydro core, sand flail, all of that is about building better overall standing structure. Honestly, most people need to focus on standing for several, several years of training, and most people will get the next evolution of training from their sport itself, the foot movement part of training. Foot movement parts of training, I do martial arts a lot, so we focus a lot on the stepping patterns. There are generic stepping patterns that we cover. I cover the most simple ones in all forms of my training, but most people are gonna end up getting foot movement training and their stepping pattern from their individual sport itself. The stepping patterns for fencing are not exactly the stepping patterns for Kung Fu or for boxing or for staff fighting. They all have a slightly different type of footwork and that footwork is usually what defines a sport or activity. It certainly does in martial arts. It also does in dance. So in the beginning, we focus on no foot movement. We focus on standing structure. We focus on hip snap and we focus on side hip snap. If you focus on these two things, this will solve usually about 90% of most people's problems. Just focusing on this, restoring people to good standing structure and good breathing patterns while standing does a lot. In kettlebells, they call that the what the hell effect. People have been doing a sport for years and they throw kettlebells in and suddenly they get better at their sport immediately. This happened to me. I did Kung Fu and martial arts for 15 years before I threw in kettlebells. I threw in kettlebells and I just learned to stand better and my overall athletic performance skyrocketed, absolutely skyrocketed, just from focusing on the six basic things in kettlebelling, the swing, the snatch, the clean, the press, the Turkish get up in the squat, because most people are missing general physical preparedness from their overall life strategy. No foot movement, we also cover that in two-handed club and single arm club, and you can work on that stuff for five years easily, easily. Then we get to the foot movement parts. Hey buddy, can I get you to come over here? Can I get you to come? No, okay. We'll just have you stay right there. Then we get into the foot movement parts. Foot movement training can become what we call activity specific preparedness instead of general physical preparedness, activity specific preparedness, because for the most part, because for the most part, uh, foot movement is specific to your sport. It's specific to your martial art. It's specific to your style of dance. It's specific to football. It's specific to soccer. There are some general agility types of things that you can consider up in general physical preparedness. But for the most part, foot movement starts to move towards activity specific preparedness. We do discussions a lot on general physical preparedness, activity specific preparedness, and sport specific preparedness. So if you don't know these terms, go back and watch some of the other videos. When we start with foot movement, I tend to start teaching people to step back first. A lot of people will teach people to step forward first. I never ever do that. If you have bad standing structure, teaching people to step forward tends to mess them up. If their feet are externally rotated or their knees aren't directly over their ankles, then when they step, they do a little shift thing with their rear leg and they might step out with their front foot and instead of stepping straight ahead, they might externally rotate, their knee might collapse in. All kinds of weird things can happen very easily with a step forward stepping pattern. Stepping back is the easier one to control because when you step back, one foot 
is already in place. So you can start from standing, you can look down at your feet, you could pick up one foot, you could step back, and the lead leg doesn't have to move. That allows people to solve a lot of problems with the arch, the ankle, and the knee of their lead leg. So we are trying to solve out a problem in people's general physical preparedness by having them step back first. No foot movement, then step back, then we go step forward. Then there are side steps. Side steps can be side shuffles. They could be stretching stance. I tend to call it stretching stance like you would see in Kung Fu or Skandasana in yoga. Then we start working on cross stepping and spinning and turning around. There are a bunch of general videos that we have made about cross stepping, stepping in front, contralateral stepping in front, ipsilateral stepping in front. We've done it with both kettlebells and clubs, and that can be a higher level of general physical preparedness. We focus on them usually in approximately this order, but always stepping back first. And then we start lining it up with ipsilateral and contralateral, which means stepping with the same side leg as the hand you're moving or stepping with the opposite side leg of the hand is moving. Stepping in front and stepping behind, there are like eight versions of every one of the steps then. So that can become a large design issue in the design of programs. And you can start to prioritize general stepping patterns into activity specific stepping patterns pretty quickly if you just look at an activity and check out the way they're the most commonly stepping. After we do standing postures, and then we do our stepping postures. Then we move into our actual posture postures, as we like to call them. Postures is a term that you use in say yoga, in martial arts, which I am more familiar with. We would call this stance. Of course, the most important one is learning to stand up. That's the one we all suck at from living in the modern world because we all sit down all the time. Then we move to warrior stance. One leg forward, one leg back, rear leg perfectly straight. We call it warrior stance because yogis call it warrior stance. And that is the most recognized terminology that you'll see in the fitness industry. Warrior one, lead leg pointed straight ahead, rear leg straight, heel on the ground, hips pointed straight ahead. Warrior two, hips open to the side. Our two most basic postures after standing because they are involved in Big walking, I'm gonna call it big walking. Martial arts call this moving in stance, but moving in stance is really just big walking done to the greatest range of movement that you can so that you always have more range of movement than you need. You don't actually expect to always use that great range of movement. You expect to be prepared to use that range of movement without injury. After that, we go to small mountain, think warrior stance, one leg back, with the one leg bent, two feet pointed straight ahead. You might call that an MMA stance if you are using modern parlance. After that, horse stance is standing with feet two shoulder widths apart and then sinking down into it with a vertical spine. The part that most people leave out here is the vertical spine part. They still arch their back and dump their rib cage. You know, most people don't practice horse stance because they're missing one key component out of it. After that, twisting stance. This is part of stepping across or cross stepping. It's just done deeper and fancier. So think of all of these as stepping in a direction from standing. Think of all of these as the same thing pushed to a greater range of movement, a more dramatic range of movement. After twisting stance, usually you move to single leg where you practice everything in a one-legged posture, usually with your knee parallel to the ground. You could either flex or point your foot depending on your sport, but learning to balance or swing weight on single leg tends to help people a lot and strengthening the arch of their foot, the stability of their ankle and their knee, and then integrating that into, hi, and then integrating that into their athletic movements. And the last one is stretching stance. Stretching stance tends to be the last of the postures because it is the most extreme. It is stepping to the side, but very, very big all the way down ass to grass. We are gonna make videos about all of these in the future, but I just wanted to give a kind of a general layout of how I'm thinking about this. Other people are probably thinking about this in a different way, and that's fine. 
Every style or sport will think about these things in a different way. We just wanna know that people are thinking about them. The most important thing, prioritize standing. Kettlebell swings, clean and press, snatch, club inside circles, mace 360s. All kettlebelling and clubbing will trick you into standing better which is the thing that everybody sucks at. A lot of gym training will not make you stand better. Gym training can oftentimes put you on a machine and you sit down and you do work, which is not standing under load. Standing under load is the important part. Something like a Mace 360 will force you into a full standing posture. There's no way to do it without standing all the way up. And the shoulders rounding is the major problem that we see in most populations in the Western world. Hip snap after that, standing up better, side hip snap, standing up with rotation. Then we move to that foot, then we move to the dramatic posture, and we would consider that somewhere between general physical preparedness and drifting into activity specific preparedness depending on how you organize the training and which things you choose to prioritize in order to get you to be better at your sport faster.